Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 8th grade concept of mean absolute deviation, specifically how we can find it and what it means, and we will do it in 5 minutes or less. So we're starting with a pretty basic data set. We've got 5 numbers, and we already know some of our basic ways to describe this data. And as you can see, uh, we've got a range. If we wanted to do a range, right, we could do uh, 42 minus 18, those are our two largest numbers, right? And that is going to be 24. Uh, if we wanted to do the mean, uh, we could figure that out. Remember, our mean is our average, right? So that is, let's just go ahead and figure that out. That's 18, that's 42, that's 36, 25, and 21. We're going to add that up. That's going to be 10. That's 11. That's 21, 22. That's 2, 3, 7, 10, 1, 42. So the mean, remember, is the sum. And then you divide it by how many numbers there are. There are 5. So we've got 1, 42, divided by 5. And we're going to need this mean for this mean absolute deviation. But what we're looking for is we're looking for measures of spread. So right now, range gives us a measure of spread. It says it's these data points are spread 24 across. Let's see what the mean tells us here. Uh, so the mean is going to be, let's see, that's 2, that's 10, that's 42, so that's 8, so that's 40. And we need to add a decimal here. So that's going to be 28.4. So this is, a me this is a measure of center. So this range helps us with the spread. This mean helps us with the center. We could also find the median if we wanted to. Our median is going to be 25 because that's our middle number if we line them all up in order. But this mean absolute deviation is a new term that we're going to use uh, in eighth grade, and sometimes it's just abbreviated as MAD, mean absolute deviation, all capitals there. And it's also a measure of spread, but it gives us a more interesting uh, sense of how spread out the numbers are. So the first step is you need to find the mean. And we've just done that. So the mean of our, and that's going to be right there, is 28.4. Second, you need to find uh, the distance of each data point from that mean. Distance from the mean. So what we're going to do, and it needs to be the absolute value of that distance, right? So we're going to take each of these data points, and we're going to do, uh, we're going to put their largest number first. We're going to do 28.4, and we're going to subtract 18, because uh, that's our first data point. So that's going to be 10.4. Four. And we're going to do 42, point, 42 minus 28.4. You notice uh, you can either do the absolute value or you can just flip the order so it always ends up as a positive. But you want all of these uh, to be positive, right? Uh, so that is going to be 0.6 gets us 29. So that's going to be 13.6. And we're going to do that for all of this. So 36 minus 28.4. Four, so that's going to be 7.6, 28.4 minus 25 that is 3.4, and then 28.4 minus 21, that is 7.4. Now, I was very strategic. I lined these up because uh, step three is you need to find the, the mean of the distances. So each of these points are this many points away from our mean of 28.4. I'm going to add them up now. So that is going to be 10, that's 20, that's 4. And that is 10, that's 15, that's 20, that's 22. All right, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So I've got a sum there of 42.4. I need to divide that by how many data points there are. And once I do that, I'm going to have my answer. And so this 8.48 is my MAD, my mean absolute deviation, and it tells me how spread out my data are from that center of that absolute deviation.